Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, I, I'd like to use my time, and you won't be surprised, to talk a bit about the, the importance of the Gateway program, ask some questions about it, and recognizing this is a very expensive project, and sometimes my colleagues, especially from across the aisle, uh, ask, you know, why is it that, that their constituents should be subsidizing such an expensive program in a northeastern state, and I, I remind them that the state I represent uh, gets about 82 cents back from the federal government for every dollar that our taxpayers send. Um, to pick a few other states, seemingly at random, Texas, the figure is about a dollar three. Um, Indiana, we just uh, had Mr. Pence here, it's about a dollar thirty. Arkansas, it's about a dollar seventy-seven. Um, for every dollar they send, they get that amount back from the federal government. So. It feels to my constituents as if we are actually subsidizing infrastructure and other services in other states um, while contributing a lot of the economic growth that sustains our country. Um, and we're, we're happy to do that because we're all Americans and we all benefit from each other's success. So with that in mind, um, I, I wanted to um, start uh, with, with Mr. Cor uh, Corbett and Mr. Gardner and ask you, um, about the national significance of this project. Um, this is the, the busiest rail corridor, passenger rail corridor in the country. Is that not correct? Simple. So maybe, uh, Stephen, I'll take the first uh, view. Certainly, Congressman, uh, from a New Jersey perspective, when you mentioned the subsidy, but I look at uh, the uh, tunnels and portal bridge, those are investments that give a return to, to, to the state, federal, local. If you look at the economic growth, you see in London what the uh, you know, Crossrail project did through multiple administrations over there has boomed the economy. And I think that's how our nation grew and where we get to create the actual wealth. So I, I would argue that's a very good investment. Right. As far as, uh, you know, we, as I said in my opening, uh, the tunnels and the approach, we have uh, very limited capacity, as you well know. Uh, we have 24, hour, 24 trains an hour that can go through the tunnels. We need right now aside from the safety and the repair and all those concerns for, for such uh, tunnels, if you think of what happened at 9-11 when we had to close Lower Manhattan, right. the impact, our national impact to our economy. So are, we are constrained in our growth that we could really be growing, certainly your district, if we had more uh, capacity in those tunnels. So we need, we need the growth, but what, what, on the negative side, what would be the consequence to the regional and national economy if, um, if the Hudson, one of the tunnels, one of the tubes failed for a significant period of time or if there were significant disruptions to traffic on the Northeast Corridor as a result of this? Yeah, I, I think as the center of global capitalism, uh, you know, New York, we're obviously New Jersey, right across the river, but we're all part of that, that, that uh, regional economy, center of global capitalism. We saw what happened after 9-11 when that we had a significant uh, adverse impact on our ability to get trans Hudson capacity. I would think um, you know, that order of magnitude. Thanks. Um, and, and let me um, uh, build on some of the questions that you heard from uh, Congressman Payne about Secretary Chow's testimony uh, recently. This this idea that we um, might be able to um, uh, repair the existing tunnel without closing it. Uh, and I think what she suggested was we might be able to, quote, take a page from New York City's efforts to uh, repair the Canarsie Tunnel in, in that same manner. But my understanding is that there are key differences between the Canarsie Tunnel and the Hudson uh, River Tunnels. So for example, the power cables in Canarsie are 600 volt cables, whereas the Hudson River Tunnel, if I'm not wrong, is 12,000 volts and therefore needs to be encased in concrete. Um, there's a difference in the tracks that, that to really repair the Hudson River Tunnel, we have wooden um, ties that, that degrade when they're wet and need to be replaced by a more modern system. Can you talk a little bit more about that because I think that's really specifically why this we think this wouldn't work. Yes, Congressman, and just to echo uh, uh, Mr. Corbett's answer as well, two percent of the um, land mass in the Northeast, twenty percent of the GDP, a loss to the Northeast corridor for a day produces about a hundred million dollar impact. It is absolutely the main line of passenger railroading in North America. Two hundred, more than two hundred thousand daily trips between New Jersey Transit and Amtrak. Uh, on the Northeast Corridor. So it's essential conduit for uh, quality of life, commerce, um, and, and mobility in the region. 
Um, to your uh, point, there are uh, many significant differences between uh, the Canarsie tube uh, and the MTA subway and, and Amtrak's Northeast uh, Corridor tunnels, those East River and North River tunnels. Um, and I think to be, to be clear, uh, what Amtrak's position is is that we absolutely need a new tunnel and we need to rehabilitate the existing tunnel, both to protect current services and to create long-term opportunity for growth. Uh, we, however, are facing a situation where uh, it's, it's unclear when we will start to build a new tunnel, and we need to preserve reliability for the benefit of Amtrak's passengers and New Jersey Transit's passengers. And uh, Kevin and I talk all the time about the needs to make sure that his trains and all of his passengers are able to successfully uh, co complete their trips. So um, the work needed to be done in the North River tubes includes as you said, addressing the high voltage cables, which are, as you say, high voltage, 12,000 vo uh, volt cables. The subway tunnels have DC third rail, very low, low voltage uh, situation. We also, in addition to, to uh, replacing those cables and modernizing them, we also need to change entirely the track structure. And this is the main difference that requires a very different approach because we have to be able to excavate the current track structure, repair the drainage underneath the track structure, also inspect the invert, the tunnel uh, lining uh, and bottom there, which hasn't been looked at, frankly, in 109 years, behind the bench walls or underneath this in any comprehensive way. We need to make sure that those repairs are made. And to do that on a four-hour slot in the evening or on a several 55-hour outage uh, scenario on the weekend uh, could present credible difficulty. It's just not clear that there's any way to do that kind of comprehensive work, which is why we have always proposed to do a full rehabilitation of the tunnels once new tunnels are in place, allowing us to maintain all of New Jersey Transit and Amtrak's current service and to be able to do the full rehabilitation of this 100-year-old asset so that it can provide utility and reliability for the decades to come. Thank you. We want it to last another 100 years, and I yield back. <laughs> 